I'm so glad you guys are here today because there's so much going on, of course, and we're trying to find a way to create virtual community in a sense, right? And that's what we're doing right now. So let's start just in a simple way. And there's a lot we can do with this format, but we're just gonna keep it really simple today. My idea is to just give a little bit of content of something to kind of think about and hold, and then go move to a little meditation and just create a sense of house and connection, even though we're all kind of disconnected. But in a way, we're, I always think that this way of communicating when I speak with people on Skype or FaceTime, I'm always amazed at uh, how intimate it actually is because you're so close, right? I can, you know, you can really see me, I can really see you. And what I've been saying to everybody, we're all in this together. You know, this is a group experience. This, the whole world is going through this together. And the opportunity right now is so big for healing. And it's funny that it's a virus, you know, that has caused this world healing to happen. And even though individually, there are many kinds of personal stories, personal problems, personal upsets that might be occurring. It is still this world experience. And if you remember that we're in it together, you won't feel alone with it. You are not alone with it at all. There's help. And literally, if you've noticed, every single day is different, right? It keeps changing. Like it's changing so fast. Like every time I turn the news on, if I do, which I normally don't, but if I do, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, right? And it keeps changing and changing and changing and changing. And everything can, it's sort of like an acceleration of a life within a life. Do you know what I mean? It's like what we're going through, all of us looking at the same camera through the same lens about the same subject that's affecting the whole world. We're all kind of watching it together. And then this happens. And then did you hear this? And then that happened. And it goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, from positive, negative, positive, negative. And I want to just bring up this one little thought, which is this Zoom meeting is inspired because I've been doing a women's circle. And everybody here is a woman. There's only women on this, on this particular meeting. And the work that we were just doing on the last session was about being steady. And we were talking about how to heal. And it was before all this happened. It was only a month ago. One month ago, we were in a very different situation. There was just like hints of this in the air and something in China, like always, you know, there's something going with the flu in China. It hadn't become any of this at that point. And I just happened to be doing the topic of healing. And so we were talking about not reacting to the fears and not and holding steady because everything's changing like this. And is it good or is it bad? Or is it good or is it bad? And I was telling the story of the Zen farmer, which I'll remind you of right now because it's a, a great little short Zen story. And it says, one day, once upon a time, there was a farmer and one day his horse ran away. And the whole village came and said, oh, this is so terrible. This is the most terrible thing ever. And the farmer says, maybe. The next day, the horse comes back and he brings three more horses with him. Now the, now the farmer has four horses. The village comes and says, oh, you're the, so lucky. You were the most, this is a miracle. You're, how lucky you are. And the farmer says, maybe. The next day, his son is riding the new horse trying to train it. And the horse throws him and he breaks his leg. And the whole village comes and says, oh, this is so unfortunate, so terrible, such bad luck. And the farmer says, maybe. And the next day, the army comes through to get all the young men in the villages to take them to war. And they don't take the son because he has a broken leg. And it goes on and on and on. You see how that goes? And so it's like that right now. It's good news, bad news, good news, bad news. And we're going, woof, 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 woof. 
And what's really happening is change is happening. And the steadier you hold, right, in your heart, the more you can actually take advantage of this time, be creative to this time, feel what is coming through you, because the more stress that you're under, the more possible might you be stressing your immune system, right? Making yourself a little bit wobbly mentally, but then therefore physically, because it all is connected. So in my own meditation, this was what I got, which was, this is like going to the ashram and we have to stay in and we have to stay, stay cloistered and we have to stay to ourselves and we get to meditate and we get to see, you know, clean out our closets and to clean up, clean up our lives and to finish our books and to write a book maybe, right? All these things can be happening. And, you know, when we were busy a month ago and we were so busy and we were too busy as we mostly all were, too, too, too busy. What I got in the meditation was we all need to rest, like deeply, deeply rest because we're all exhausted like really at the deepest level exhausted we haven't been able to keep up with the acceleration of our times as things are going quicker and quicker we are having trouble psychically and mentally and physically and emotionally keeping up with the changes and the changes and the changes and the changes and so this is like a reset and an opportunity to go back in. And whether it be three days, three weeks, three months, whatever this period is, could you trust that it's perfect? Like this is exactly the right amount of time for you, for me, to organize our lives differently, and to come back into life differently. And that when we were in our too busy time a month ago, we would have been so happy if somebody gave us a ticket, right? And said, here's a ticket to go to the ashram in India and you get to stay there for three months <laughs> and you have to pray every day and you only are going to eat vegetarian food and, you know, and we'd go, oh, I wish I could go, but I'm too busy. <laughs> so this is that. And that's what I got in my meditation, that this is potentially an ashramic experience if you will let it be to let yourself reset to the new times that we're in and to the new offerings that you will make and what are those new offerings it might be that you write a book of poems it might be that you start you know getting your life and affairs in order because there's too much disorder there or it might be that you learn something new or it might be that you augment something that you already have. But whatever it is, treat it like the gift that is within this. And there is a gift. And you will know it as the days go by, because right now we're still in the very fast up and down period where we're moving with such speed of almost, if you would listen to the news throughout the day, I'm pretty sure that throughout the day it would be changing with good news, bad news, good news, bad news, good news. You know, we see the singers singing in Italy from their windows, and then it might be till we're not, you know, the stores won't open till next January, <laughs> you know? And from one high to one low, from one high, because we're right now in these extremes. We're moving in extremes because we're in shock a little bit. The world is a little bit in a boot shock. So, let yourself treat this time to treat it like the ashram. So the note I gave to myself was about today is how can we take care better of ourselves? Really and truly. And what does that even mean? And how do you take care of yourself? And that also was part of the subject of healing in the women's circle last time we met um, one month ago exactly was the subject of how can we better take care of ourselves because if we're not taking care of ourselves we can't take care of anybody you know not very well or we can just barely you know and it taxes us and so 
when we go into the meditation, I want you to think about that, like how, and sort of from your soul's point of view though, from the ashram, how can I better take care of myself? Like truly and really. The first two days, as this was getting ramped up last week only, you know, like last weekend really, I slept a lot. I just slept and slept and slept and I kept saying, I'm so tired, I'm so tired, I was so tired. And I just needed to sleep and I slept like 12 hours and then I'd take a nap. <laughs> like I never, I'm not a nap taker and I'm not a long sleeper, but I was then. And rather than judging myself and saying, oh, you're so lazy or you shouldn't do that, there's things to do and you should go shopping and get food <laughs> and buy toilet paper, <laughs> which I didn't. <laughs> I don't have very much toilet paper. <laughs> I slept, you know, and then that passed, right? Because that passed. And by the third day, not even like the first and a half day, I was done with that. And then I began another phase and another phase. And this is self-care. This is how you do self-care because what you're doing might be different than what I'm doing, right? You might be just wanting to read books or watch TV, you know, or watch the news, which be careful, you know, how much you do that. But, you know, that might be what you need to do for seven hours straight, just because you're trying to understand, you're trying to understand and you read everything on Google about it. And I know people that have done that too, that are just, you know, reading, researching, reading, researching. And as long as you don't, remember how I always teach this idea that everything's okay if it's conscious, right? And everything's not okay if it's not. So if I'm doing unconscious internet searches and scaring myself to death, or I'm doing conscious internet searches and I'm learning, do you feel the difference of that? And conscious grocery shopping, right? How many toilet papers do I need, you know, really? And am I responding to the fear of like, what if we never have it again? Or it'll be there, or to trust that it will be there. And if something should change, then we do something different, right? So that we can respond, respond, respond to what is actually happening, not our fear of what could be happening. So there's one more thought I wanna share. And that is the idea of um, the definition of neurosis which I learned from one of my very first teachers, whose name was Dr. David Viscott, who saved me when I was young, young, 15, 16. I listened to him on the radio. He was a, you know, one of those radio uh, psychiatrists and he was super intuitive. And I actually ended up getting to work with him and study with him a bit. And he sort of mentored me, you know, took me under his wing because I was just so wide open for it at 17 years old. And he taught me this, he taught everybody this actually. And that is that the definition of neurosis is the fear of being afraid. The worry that I'll be worried, right? The, um, I, I, I'm scared that I could be this versus I am this. This goes back to consciousness again. There's nothing wrong with worry. There's nothing wrong with fear. There's nothing wrong with going on the internet. There's nothing wrong with watching the news, right? Because if it's conscious, right? The way you use it is differently than when it goes unconscious, which is neurotic, but just in his example, neuro neurosis, that it makes us act out. <laughs> right? Act out. And so other things are coming out, not our intention, not what we mean, not the uh, highest good. It is a fear of fear of fear of fear. And so it's like being scared that there could be a tiger, right? What if there's a tiger? And believe me, if there was a tiger, you'd know just what to do. Like that, you'd know what to do. But there is no tiger. But what if there was, right? And that's how, that's how that goes. So how do we be peaceful in our hearts, stay conscious in ourselves, so that even if it's sleeping for two days, you know, or whatever it is that you're wanting to do, can you trust 
in your consciousness that that's exactly where you should be right now is to let yourself sleep or to let yourself eat or to let yourself read a book and get lost in a story, right? All of these things that people are, but done unconsciously, it can be denial. It can be addiction, right? It can be, it can twist and turn into things that are unconscious behaviors. So back to the main idea. How, how do we better care for ourselves right now? And that is gonna be the subject of the meditation. And also knowing that there's a community here of women, which is, we are the healers of the world. And each one of you is a healer in our world. And you're part of all of this. And so this way of connecting to remind each other and to stay connected in ourselves and to take care of ourselves because people are going to pull children, parents, friends, the world, the news, things will pull on you. Did you do this? Did you take care of that? What if you didn't do that? Is your, uh, you know, there's, there's so many little uh, flares, like little fires that come up. I've noticed almost every day and I'm talking to clients all day long and everybody's kind of got different takes on it based on um, where they are. And some people very broad vision and knowing that all is well and that, it, that, you know, on some level that this is going to be healing for the world, which is what I truly believe. And some people are wondering that they went to the gun store, you know, today and they were out of guns. And I've heard that too. And so it's all out there, right? And, and there's no judgment about any of this. It's just, it's just all out there. And so how do we, you, me, hold our center, which is what we're going to do in our meditation. We're going to move into our meditation and we're going to ask at that deep level, how better can I take care of myself right now in order that I can offer something to the world or to my family or just to my little neighborhood, you know, whatever it is. Okay, so that's the idea and that's where we're going to go. So when you're ready to, we're just going to close our eyes I meditate, I have to put my hair up. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do almost always. <laughs> and uh, I realize I've got this um, screensaver thing on. I'm going to change that and put it back to normal. I forgot to turn it off. Hold on. There. <laughs> All right, back to normal. <laughs> Remember at the full moon when I said, what is reality? <laughs> you know, what is reality? You know, what are we creating in our reality? What are we creating in our reality? So here we go. Close your eyes. I'm going to light a candle. That's for all of us, of course. If you have a candle, you could light one too. It's always good to do. It's a way to connect kind of energetically through light to light. And remember, if you don't have a candle, don't worry, just light it in your mind. Let's close your eyes and just take a few breaths now. Now, there's no better, quicker way to organize the body's mental body, emotional body, physical body, psychic body, etheric body, astral body, than your breath, right? Inhaling and exhaling. And as you inhale and exhale, imagining that your breath, not imagining because the breath is doing this, but realize, know that your breath is doing this. It is balancing and harmonizing the bodies, body, mind, heart, soul, into a cohesive alignment of harmony. And so you feel yourself harmonize the self by your breath. Breath by breath, quieting, mental body, 
quieting the emotional body, quieting the physical body. And just feel yourself connected right now. Soul connected. I am soul connected. And I am soul connected with everyone. And I am soul connected with everyone that is here. And beyond that, I am soul connected to everyone. Everyone, breath by breath, and then rest into the center of the heart where you know all of this. Where you know all of this, and feel the flower blossom petals of each of us as one of these petals of the cosmic lotus of the cosmic consciousness. We are all connected, part of the same flower. And in your heart, send a line of light, like a silvery cord that goes right up through into the head center, from the heart to the head center. And you establish this alignment where the heart and the head become union, in union, and harmonically connected, even though they're different notes, and feel the crown chakra open. In a moment, let the crown chakra open opens. Feel the soul. With you. The soul with you. Like it's got its arms around you. As it blesses you. And thanks you. And gives you comfort. and lifts away your pain or your fears or the worries. So for in this moment, you can feel at peace, aligned with the soul, aligned with the soul. I am aligned with the soul, Om. And as you align with the soul and you feel its arms around you in a sense of this beautiful care taking, that you're being taken care of. Feel the peace that comes with it. Feel the relief. Is that shuddering relief of letting go what has been happening, some of the shocking that has happened mentally even, or literally, just letting all of that just dissolve into the soul that lifts it and takes it and lifts it and takes it and lifts it and takes it. So that you feel more and more and more and more and more and more present. Calm, center, connected vertically with the soul to the heart in a big circle with all of us, all these beautiful women, all these beautiful healers, all these beautiful teachers, all these beautiful mothers, all these beautiful women all of this beautiful feminine that we are part of. And you can almost smell a rose in the air right now. 
And in this deep space of this rose, almost like you're sitting within a rose, like it's your shelter, it's your safety, but it's also your comfort, you know. You rest in the rose, like really rest, like I slept, right? Like really rest. Really rest. And in that deep resting, allow yourself to open now to the soul's knowing, the ashram that is within you, that is for you, that has your name on it. And as you're sitting at the feet of the masters or at your own soul's feet or at the feet of Jesus or at the feet of the Buddha or at the feet of the goddess or at the, you know what I mean? It's that humble. Just in that sweetest way, knowing that there's a connection between the teacher and the student, or the master and the aspirant, right? That is fond, that is caring, that loves you. And you can feel that. And that it's not in any judgment at all. Not at all. It just loves you. And you can feel that now, the love. And in this space of this love, and this respect, can you feel the respect? I mean, certainly us to our soul, but from our soul to us, this respect, this honoring, in this space, we're going to move into the silence with the question, how can I better care? What do I need right now? How may I be in better alignment to these times? How can I heal myself? There's no judgment in these questions, nor these answers. So pick something of that or your own version of it, right? That is this beautiful asking. And then begin to move into the silence deep. What would serve us? What would serve me? I am listening. Right now.
How can I better care? Feel the blessing of your own soul as it teaches you how. But it also teaches you to care about you. And that it's all right to care about you. And this might be the first time that you have felt that. To let yourself care. About you. Like your soul does. So one of the things in my Love Is series that I wrote the other day was Love Is Offering. And then the next one I wrote was Love Is Receiving. Can you receive this? gift from your soul. Will you receive this light? Don't forget that it's there. And when you're ready, and your breath get deeper and fuller. And when you open your eyes, when you're ready to, it's like a whole new world because we've changed. is different. And to not forget the power of this literal transmutation from one state to another. From one state to another. From a lower vibration to a higher vibration.